Let me turn now to uh, scaling up and how do small and medium enterprises, entrepreneurs really take the next leap. I mean, it's, it's something which is known that India's economic backbone has really been the SMEs. But how do you go to the next level? I'm going to pose that question to the panel now. Rajshi, let me start with you. You started like everybody from scratch. You've built a business and you're still thinking of continuing to build it. What are the two or three things that you did, according to you, that helped you come to this stage? I think it's very important for any entrepreneur to have a, a vision. And a vision, a short-term vision and a long-term vision. A short-term vision that perhaps is a year or five years and a long-term vision that is maybe a, a 10 years, 20 years, whatever. That's up to them to define. And to work on both these um, uh, goals with commitment. Scaling up is a very committed uh, sort of experience. Um, I would say that entrepreneurs are used to doing everything themselves. And they have to learn to let go. I think that's the first lesson. Um, scaling a company from a 10 crores to 500 crores is not the same as taking it from 500 crores to 1,000 crores. The same team that made the first growth possible is usually incapable of taking the next step. You need to find different skill sets. You need to learn from, from people who achieved those um, 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 uh, targets. We also need to develop leadership within the institution. Therefore, I think the mistake that most people make in, in, in SMEs is the entrepreneur thinks he can do it all on his own. Every entrepreneur is limited. Everyone is limited by their, their exposure. Everyone's limited with their skill sets. And therefore, it's very, very important to, to understand your own limitations and take help to take that next step. Mr. Kamath, what would your recipe be for scaling up? I would agree with uh, everything that uh, Rajshri said. Uh, I guess... Uh, Building teams uh, comes first. You then need to look at what are the other inputs that uh, will help you along the way. Uh, clearly, uh, getting the financial equation right comes uh, simultaneously. If there is a technological equation you can leverage, getting that right comes thereafter. The commitment to focus on the task ahead, which is execution, uh, comes thereafter. See, uh, what I have found in my uh, career is that uh, Indian entrepreneurs are able to do most of these things. The one characteristic which I find till recently was not uh, visible was uh, letting go. Letting go was very difficult and particularly letting go of businesses. However important it was to let go of business, to free up cash. You know, you already taken on another project. Your tendency was hold on to this and then let us see this will find its own solution. Never happens. Or letting go of equity. We'll say that I will do a convertible bond and you know all the problems that I have in I can tell you that every single entrepreneur who has got stuck on convertible bonds, I have spent at least one hour telling him raise equity today. Don't go the convertible route. But not one of them. Uh, idea was, well, I have a brighter future tomorrow and day after. That's when the conversion will happen. I will dilute less. As a consequence, you have brought on a whole lot of burden on your shoulders. So, I would think that traditionally Indian business did not get the financial equa equation right. I think the people equation started falling right about 15-20 years back. The financial equation, I think they tried to get it right, a lot of them in 2003-2004, coming out of the, the crisis of the 1980s, 1990s and uh, the late 1990s. But again, they have walked into some sort of a trap. I think if a small and medium industry understands that this is where you know, the bigger companies went and this is where they have gotten stuck, I think they can uh, you know, tread their path carefully.